What's up guys? Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Guys, you see it correctly. In the title below, we are reviewing a 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. This is the beauty we'll be going over today. Quick history on it. Back in 92, there was a Jeep called the Jeep Comanche. And then it went away. And enthusiasts really did miss that. So they said hey, they want some type of pickup type Jeep. And what they do, they introduce the Gladiator. The Gladiator is this. They slapped on a five foot bed and here we are. So this is the Rubicon. This is the top model. There is a sport model. There is a Overland and there's the Rubicon. All three different price points. And we're talking about a 30,000 price difference from the sport to this. And this does not disappoint. It's worth every penny. And I'm gonna show you why. So cue the B roll. <laughs> So let's go ahead and start off with the exterior of this car. Now, you probably won't notice that much, but believe it or not, there is a difference in the grills between the regular Wrangler and the Gladiator. Actually, the Gladiator, is the, the grill is much larger. And the reason why is because of the fact that this truck is different from the Gladiator is that it, want, it needs to tow. That's the whole point of a pickup truck, right? You have the capability of towing and carrying a little bit more payload. So they had to create a bigger grill so they can create more air and allowing the truck to have the capability to feed that engine so that it can go ahead and pull whatever it's pulling. Fun little fact. Now as we go deeper into here, little attention to detail, but right up there, you got a little Jeep logo, which is pretty neat. I know it's kind of weird that I'm going right into that, but little tips and tricks. And then you have that nice fancy lettering that says Rubicon to let you know that you're driving a Rubicon. I love the actual hood scoops here. It just gives it that aggressive look the cool thing I love about Jeeps in general is that all the changes you can make to the Jeep and just to make it your own. And that's why Jeeps don't really lose their value because of the fact that people just have a sentimental value to it. So when they sell it, they're always going to sell it at a higher price and they're not going to get rid of it otherwise. Now, as you go down to this bumper, it is a little bit plastic covering here, but obviously I'm sure the there's steel back here. There's a lot of plastic covering, which may be a little toyish in my opinion but it's still cool it looks good to me i love the actual accent red i'm a big fan of white and red um, i just love that look anything with red in particular and then you have your fog lights up here which is pretty nice and other than that it's a normal jeep if you go over here this is your hood you're gonna need two people to do it so real quick and here we are so we are inside the actual hood and this is the v6 engine and there is no v8 option so the only thing you can do here is swap it out but the v6 you know it gets the job done the whole point of this car is not performance like speed and all that stuff it's just the capability and the functionality of a jeep i actually do like this look i mean it's pretty cool i've never really seen this jeep in particular the the hood under the hood so this is a pretty first for me but pretty neat love that cold air intake i would definitely drop an engine in there because um, I would like to see this Jeep with the V8. They do have people on the internet dropping Hellcat engines in it, but I don't know if I could do that. This is too much of a expensive vehicle to kind of test different things on. But if Dodge made it and then, you know, you're dropping a Hellcat engine, I'm pretty sure it's plug and play, and that's pretty cool. Got a little sidetracked there. So let's go continue on to the exterior of the car as we go around you have these traditional fender flares i do like the actual one color here some people have they have the black on it i'm not a big fan of that kind of looks cartoonish you have that two-tone flare nah not me but either way it's to each his own these are 33 inch tires now if you want 35 inch tires you can get that it is an upgrade but it looks great already you also have 
Fox suspension, so obviously for your off-roading experience, you have that nice performance shocks. So if we go through, you have your traditional doors, nothing new, very similar to a Dodge Wrangler. Now, if we go over here, this is the hard top. So with the hard top, a little story here, it is pretty simple to take off this front here. So if you, it's a two piece top. So this right here comes off and then this comes off. All right, so if you do this one, just so you can take off by yourself, it has an actual bag and I'll show you really quick that comes with it so you can store it and it doesn't get scratched. But here, it's gonna be a two man job. Um, there is tools in there, what that comes with the Jeep, gives you everything you need to take everything off so you would go inside and you would start unscrewing things and all that. Now I wanna keep in mind, this isn't a normal top, okay? This top does actually have technology in it. When I say that, I'm meaning like the rear defogger, you know, lights, uh, lights, so uh, windows, defrost windows in the back. So you have all those type of things. So there is a, some electronics in there that you actually have to be careful when you're pulling this off. So it's very important. It isn't some cheap plastic, okay? Now the plastic, when you, if you have that Jeep, it's real simple to take off. It's actually just pops right off and one person can do it all. But when it comes to this right here, it's a two man job. And when you're talking $60,000, you want to be very careful with your cars. Now, as we go through, this is the add-on. This is the brand new pickup truck. This is the bed. It's five feet. Uh, I believe the payload is around 1,800 pounds. Now, cool little thing here. You can get the hard top here if you want to just do a straight cover, but keep in mind, you're gonna have to take it all off, you know, take it all off if you want to remove it or whatever. It isn't no, you want to open it halfway. This is just the rag top here, pretty much. And I'll go ahead and I'll open this up. This will catch, it doesn't fall down, pretty nice. But also, if this is closed, this won't open, okay? What you can do is you can pop this open here, so you can see there. Now let's say, for example, I wanna close my door, I wanna leave it open, I just wanna grab some little things. I don't have to have the whole bed back. I can just go through and grab what I need and go on my way. And then you can continue on. I wonder if it's the same thing with the other side. Sorry about that. So you would go ahead and pull this and you just keep on going back and keep, you can roll this all the way back and use all that. So it's a pretty neat little feature. Snaps on very well and I'm very impressed with that. Now also, if I come down here a little bit, you have an outlet. So outlet, if you wanna go ahead and do whatever you gotta do, you wanna plug in an electrical grill or whatever you wanna do, you can plug that in. This is disabled right now. There's a button, I'll show you in the front over here, you have to turn that on in order to turn on the power in the back. So that's pretty cool, you know? You got a light back here and everything, kind of make it useful. This right here has that rough exterior. They have some that have the same paint that goes in the back, but I would rather have this type of gripping so you can walk on it, step on it, and have grip, and that's pretty cool. Other than that, that's the back of the Jeep. I mean, I think it's pretty cool. It's just pretty simple, I love that look. Also here real quick, there is a backup camera. There it is, that's neat as well. And then you have the tow hooks, which is cool. You got your hitch and you got a tow hook. All neat little features. As you go around, now we're back over into the back of the Jeep again. Here you have your gas tank and your doors. And that's the exterior of the Jeep Gladiator. What makes this different between the other Gladiators is the big tires, the actual stock lift, which is really nice compared to the other ones are a little bit lower. They look kind of basic, but this one is lifted, has more of an aggressive look. And when you take that top down, it is absolutely stunning. It looks like you're ready to go to the beach, have fun and do all that. So no more talking, let's get into the interior, show you what's inside this beautiful machine. So we are in the interior of this car and it is hot outside in Florida today. Florida used to be cold the past couple months and now we're back in Florida form and it is hot outside. But anyways, back into the interior. You're gonna see this interior and it is absolutely stunning. This is where all that money comes in in my opinion. I feel okay, when I see that $60,000 price tag, I'm like, ah, oh, that's pretty expensive, right? But when I get inside, I forget about that price tag because I'm like, dang, this is so nice. It really is. So basically you have this, these inserts, it's pretty much it's like a nice, uh, gunmetal red going across the front here and it is gorgeous. I love the actual two-tone, like I said, red is my thing. Everything inside is leather 
and I just love the, the durability of it, but at the same time, the luxury that comes with it. So come on in, I'm gonna show you everything I'm seeing, and man, this is really neat. <laughs> All right, guys, I went ahead and moved the truck a little. I moved it so we can get some better lighting. The other shots are crazy because the sun was in my face. You really couldn't see anything. It was all pretty much black. All right, so here's the door, right? It's a door, nothing new. But the thing with Jeeps, the doors are removable. So what they do is, you know, you just unhook all this stuff. They give you the tools, and you take your door off, and you have a nice, cool, open Jeep. These are very nice doors. I like the white. If you had a white, you had a red, you don't want your paint getting messed up. So... You don't want to be carrying it like a like you're carrying a tree. You have to put your arms around it. No, actually, there's a handle right here. This handle helps you get a grip of the door so you can easily move it and put it down nice and gently and it's not messing up your door. And that's pretty much it. If you notice, there's no buttons here. There's no buttons for windows and things like that because the door is going to come off. So pretty simple. You can still control your side view mirrors, though. Well, that's something. But yeah, anyways. So then you can still lock doors all here, but there is no buttons. Where are those switches at? I'll show you in just a second. So I'm going ahead and I'm in the car. I went ahead and turned it on because it is hot in Florida. And like I said, I can't stand it. With this beautiful white interior, exterior, it comes with this nice red accent interior. As you saw the tow hooks in the front, they were red, which is really nice. And then here, I love this flat red. I just love that look. And then you come down here, you have a little red button here. This is standard. Everything comes this color. It's not like if you had blue, it would be blue here. No, it's just red. But it just happens to work perfectly. Now, if we come down here, this is where all your windows are being controlled. As we talked about there, there is no buttons. The buttons are here. Let's move up and let's come back to over here, our gauge cluster, right? So we have our regular 120 miles an hour. This car is not the fastest. I promise you that. It's not amazing. But it's, that's not what it's made for. It's made for going off-road and doing all that fun stuff, right? So here, you know, it's just pretty much it. It's not very eventful. Um, when you do turn it off, or let's say when I turn it on. Come on, work with me now. You get that nice Rubicon, and it's telling you you're in a Rubicon. So it's different because normally if you were in a Jeep, it might just say Jeep. This is Rubicon because you're driving in a Rubicon. As we come down here, we have our 12-volt chargers. Nothing new. You have a media so you can control your aux cords. You have USB and you have a micro USB, which is pretty nice. You have an off-road mode. You can disconnect the sway bars. You have, you can control the rear differentials and that's all pretty neat. I love this right here. It also, you can go, you know, too high and four high and whatever, four low if you want to change all that as if you're going off-road. And then this is your shifter. I love the Jeep shifter. I think it's pretty cool. Now if we come back here. This is the really neat thing. I have some curio I have some curiosity with these because the last car I reviewed didn't really have the most amazing infotainment center, the actual Jeep Gladiator. This one right here has that nice big screen, very similar to the Dodge Durango and any other Dodge product. So it's all very similar. You got the whole buttons. It's pretty much the same thing with the Uconnect system, Apple Play, CarPlay. Heat, this thing has heated seats, AC seats. It's all pretty cool. But the cool little things that this thing comes with that the other cars don't have is if I go over here, let's go, we got off-road pages. So I've never seen that one before. Here you can control your accessory gauges and see if there's anything going on, cool and temp, oil temp. You can control the drivetrain and see exactly what's going on. It'll tell you um, where everything's transferring. And then you got your pitch and roll and it can tell you all that, tell you the numbers that you're going on when you're doing rock climbing pretty cool features that's pretty neat stuff before dodge is very manual i mean dodge jeeps were very manual and didn't have all this stuff you just had to be a man and know this stuff. now pretty tells you all that nice cool stuff another thing i want to show you guys and this is a pretty neat little feature let's say you just bought your brand new jeep you don't know much about it right so all this technology you may be an older gentleman or maybe somebody that's just not in technology i know that's out there so what you do is you go ahead go ahead and hit this vehicle user guide it is pretty neat. So I'll go ahead and let me see, go back to home. So it goes on and you say what you want to know. Do you want to know about the radio, the phone, vehicle maintenance, emergency support, these type of things. Us car review guys must love this because you just come here and get your hand in a car and start moving around. So here you go. You can go through, control your driving controls, comfort, convenience, and you want to explore. Say so you don't know exactly what you're looking for. Very simple. You can go through, you just like what you want to see. Oh, I want to learn about the infotainment center, the interior of the car. So you go ahead, you type that and tap that and it goes in. Oh, I went back one more. 
did it take me there? There we go. So I'd go in here. Now I'm in the. T I want to hit the. Oh, ah! I keep on touching stuff. I'm very clicky. All right, we'll move it that. We'll move in there. We're going to explore. I want to know about the inside. So I go on the inside. Now, what do you want to know? Do you want about the doors? Do you want about all these switches out of here on the left? Do you want to know about what else did we got down there? Do you want to know about the hood of the, you know, up here? Do you want to know about this stuff? What do you want to know? Steering wheel? No, I want to know this right here. So I go in here and I go into the infotainment center. Now I want to know about the front. It's the console of the car. So I want to know about the AC, how to control it, shifters and things like that. I would go to here and then you can go through and you can start tapping buttons, what you want to learn about. And you can see music, media, radio, <clears throat> all really cool features. So pretty much, you don't need that big, thick guide like you always had. Everything is in here, and it's pretty cool. And it's pictures. We love pictures, don't we? Nobody likes to read anymore. But it's pretty cool stuff. You're going to have to eventually read, but whatever. So let's move down into the actual center console here. Now, if I open this up, very simple. It has a nice little compartment here that can hold coins, little small things like that. And then if you open down here... You have a nice deep compartment in there, which is nice. You have a nice USB and nice USB port in there, and that's pretty cool. So, yeah, it's pretty deep, too. Look how deep my hand is in there. It's pretty cool. I like that. Now, as you can see, the seats, I absolutely love them. It's that nice, durable leather. This isn't Laguna leather like you would see in a Hellcat, but it is very nice, sturdy leather, very similar to what you'd see in a Durango. Yeah, that nice Rubicon stitching, that two-tone red going down, all going throughout the dash panel of the car itself. The door panel's there, and going through the steering wheel, all cool, very tasteful. As you also see here, you have this nice entertainment bar here. So this right here, you can take this off, obviously the hood, you can take the back hood off as well. And then, here you got your speakers built into it. What comes with this car, believe it or not, and I'll show you that in just a second, is a Bluetooth speaker, which is pretty neat. But as you can see in the back there, you have some nice roll bars. And what comes with the car itself is a bag that will pretty much, when you take off the this hood right here, you can put that in that bag there, and it'll protect the paint of your hood. So when you take it off, you put it away. It's not getting scratched by anybody walking around it. So enough about the front. Let's hop into the back, and let's see what this comfort's like. So now we are in the back of the car, and as you can see, my girly knees. Yes, I skipped leg day. I got to get back into it. But either way, here's our nice, uh, you have the seat. You have plenty of room back there. I was sitting up very comfortably. The thing with these Jeeps is you sit more upright than you do laid back. It's not what you call the most laid back car. You're a little bit more into the drive, and you're driving. You're up on the wheel. So yeah, but it's still, it's very comfortable. It's not the most roomiest back seat, but it's there. It has plenty of room. I'm going to go ahead and close this door up. It closes nicely, as you can hear. We have our AC vents here, which is cool. Um, you have here is where you control your windows, because just like the front, there is no window switches in the doors. Then you also have your your volt batteries here, your 12-volt battery, 12-volt outlet, sorry. And then you can just plug your laptops in, whatever, tablets, devices. And you have your cup holders, just like you do up front, which is pretty cool. Now, you have plenty of room. You can go ahead. Now, I would say, well, just like any back seat, nobody's going to be putting their feet here. They'll be putting their feet right over here. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's very comfy. Uh, let's see. You get your armrests here. It comes down. More cup holders. So, ultimately, you have four cup holders in the back seat. It's a little bit much. Now, this right here is the functioning window. Just got to learn how to use it. As you can see there, that functioning window. I can go ahead and stick my hand out here, and that's pretty cool. This, But this all does come off, giving you a heads up here. So all this stuff would come off, and that's how you would take it off. I don't really know how to take it off, but you can look it up, and I'm not going to try to because this is a $60,000 car, and I'm not allowed to. But all this stuff does come off. It comes with tools to go ahead and take the hood off, and you can do that. Again, two-man job. One man job, you can do that yourself. And if you're an experienced Jeep owner, you may be able to do it by yourself. And I've seen guys do it in five minutes, and it's at least on the internet. So the more experience you get, the quicker you get at it, right? So, a real quick thing I also wanted to point out, and that's also in the back seat. So, this back seat isn't your normal back seat, it's actually very functional, very great for utilities. 
What do I mean by that? Well, remember I was talking about our hood itself and you want to take that off, you're going to have to have tools, right? Well, when you take off the tools, you're going to have to take off screws and bolts and things like that. Where do you put the bolts? Well, what happens is normally you would probably put your bolts somewhere and then you lose them. Next thing you know, you can't put your hood on ever again. Well, not with Jeep. They thought about you and they want you to be repaired. So first off, you lift this seat up here. All you got to do is just pick it up with your hand. It's not heavy at all. And then first off, you have a compartment here. This compartment here, I believe this is... I think this is the tools. I don't know. No, it's not tools. It's something else. The tools are around here somewhere. I don't know where they're at. They're in one of the compartments. But either way, here's the compartment here. That's not what I was talking about. This is what I was talking about. So when you take off all those nuts and bolts, as you can see here, you have something This is for the actual doors. So whenever you take off the doors, you would take the screws from there and you would just put them in there. Come with eight screws or eight nuts. And you would just drop all that stuff in there. And then for this one, let's see what else you got here. Um, you want to take off the, what is that? I think that's the hood of the car. Anyways, if you want to take that off, then you would go ahead and you would just store the four screws in there. It's telling you how many screws come with each one, you know, whatever you got to do. And it's obviously the back, front, I think. And then, yeah, the doors itself. And this must be something else. I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not like the most expert. But it's pretty neat because it gives you somewhere to put all your stuff. Me, I would lose everything. So let's go on to the other side of the vehicle and I want to show you the other compartment. Put that down. So now we're at the other side, right? We're going to go ahead and lift this up here. There we go. It's a little bit heavier. It's not like the other one. That one's very light. This one, you got to put a little more power into it. So this is your towing kit and everything. If, if you have an issue with your tires, you got a flat tire. Here's the, the jack. And then here's another compartment here. And this is the toolkit I was telling you about. So everything is in here. There's a nice little toolkit. It has everything you need to take off your hood. Everything comes together, and that's cool on Jeep's part. Now, another cool thing. Put that down. Pull the switch back here. Believe it or not, there's nothing here right now, but they don't have I guess they have to get it for you. But it comes with a Bluetooth speaker, which is pretty cool. So you, It's this durable Bluetooth speaker that you can put in water up to 30 feet for 30 minutes or I don't even know it's some crazy stats It can last for like 30 minutes in water. It's crazy I don't know why you would need to do that But it's a Bluetooth speaker so you can go ahead and use it for whatever you need and it's pretty cool It would go back here and you would close that up And there you go. I mean everything just comes apart But at the same time everything has functionality of the Jeep this thing is absolutely amazing and I absolutely love it Oh before I do anything I wanted to point out something here the actual doors, if you notice, the doors are all the different. It's a little bit different, right? You have these doors like this, and then you have a cutout back here. This is very similar to the Jeep Wrangler. It's identical. The reason why they did that, why not give you a full door like the front? Here's the reason why, guys. Believe it or not, it's because they want for they want to help the customer if they need to replace parts for replacement parts. So God forbid something happens to your back door. Well, you don't know gladiators are pretty much brand new so you're not going to find total ones out there so it's going to be very hard to find a door so what you can do is you can go ahead and find a total jeep wrangler and just go ahead and replace the door with their same back doors and it'll be easier to find that's why it's the same exact door as the older models because they want to have the accessibility of replacement parts so it's pretty cool on dodge's part to think about the customer in that way all right let's go ahead and hop into the driver's seat and go for a drive all right, guys, so now we are in the car. We're in the Jeep. We're going to go for a drive. It is very hot in Florida today, but the things I do for you guys, so please like and subscribe just because I'm doing this for you. It's hot. All right, so right off the bat, it is a very sturdy drive. It is not the most luxurious vehicle. It's not like the Durango, where the Durango is very like a cloud, in my opinion. Um, but you do have that lift type of feel. I feel like I'm driving up pretty high. I like that. Now, another cool thing about it, the actual hood itself. The aggressive flares, the aggressive hood scoops that come out of this thing are absolutely gorgeous. Well, they're pretty much, they're heat inductors, so they're letting the heat out. Air is not going into it. But I do love the look of it. It gives that aggressive look when I'm looking down. I'm in something that's aggressive. I love that look. I love the actual contrast between the the red and the white when I'm looking out, which is very nice, very cool. I'm gonna go ahead and punch it a little bit. Zero to 60. 
yes, it's not the quickest thing in the world. It's not the most loudest thing in the world either. I mean, yeah, I punched it a little bit and I barely hit 50. I mean, it was, it's just meh. I can't punch it too much anyways because I'm low on gas. But all in all, it's, it's just a great vehicle where everything comes from, right? It's going to be off-road. But in this case right here, I love it. This is the coolest car out there. Just It's just so cool. It really is. The look of it, I really do love it. It's soft. It's not that bad. Even though I'm high up, I don't feel unstable. I feel kind of hunkered down a little bit. I wish I could take this thing off-road, but I can't, guys. It's brand new, and it belongs to the dealership still. But if I could, I would. Let me go down this way. We've got some bumpy roads here. I'm not going off-road. This is some bumpy roads that are here. And if you guys can tell, I mean, it's really bad. These roads would have messed up my bumper. Handling it very nicely. So why did Jeep make this vehicle? Why did they make it this size? Why, did, why didn't they go ahead and make it a little bit larger? Well, guys, the reason why they stuck with the five-foot bed and the four doors, believe it or not, that is the most popular configuration in this market when it comes to mid-sized trucks. So with the Colorado and all that, they all have five foot beds um, or around that range. So they all have that size, they're all four doors and that's what they have to compete with. Now you're probably thinking $60,000 is a lot of money, but if we go down to the smaller trim levels like the Sport and the Overland, believe it or not, those cars come, you know, start up at 35, and if you were to get the same Tacoma at that price point, I think the Tacoma loaded up is probably around 33 grand. So it's around $1,000 cheaper than the actual Sport. Now, when you go into the Rubicon, I think the Rubicon is kind of in a class of its own. I don't think there's any midsize trucks that are that expensive. I think you may be able to get a Tacoma TRX, whatever it is called, or TRD um, loaded out probably for that price or close to the price of $60,000, but for the overlord, not overload, an overland, a decked out overland would be the same price point as far as a, a decked out Tacoma would be the same price point as an overland. So it's something you know to think about. So don't think, oh my gosh, the, the Gladiator is overpriced. No, it's not, it's actually, it's actually affordable. Now, what do I think about this car overall? Is it worth every dollar? Uh, yes. Would I buy this with my own money if I had the money? Yes. I am not just saying that because of the fact that I'm a Mopar guy. I really do love this thing. I love the look of it. Every day, this truck right here, me getting in it, I feel so cool being in it. I really do. It's one of those things where when you get into something every single day and you're just like, I'm glad I'm in this. When you buy a brand new house and you, the house is done and you're just like, I'm so glad I bought this house. That's exactly how I feel when I'm in this truck. I just feel like if I got in this car every day, I wouldn't be tired of it. I would just say, I absolutely love this car. I would feel that way with my Scat Pack if I had red interior. If I had red interior, I would say, I love the look of my Scat Pack. I love my Scat Pack, don't get me wrong. But I would really love a red interior. Same thing here. I would really love to own this thing here. I love the infotainment center. I love that it's actually, um, you know, nice and sealed in so that if this if my hood's open and I have rain coming in in some way, it wouldn't damage my electronics and I would feel, I would feel very safe with my investment. Now, another thing that it's kind of the downfall to Jeep, right? It's just, you know, it's not practical. If you're, you take your hood off and you're in the middle of Publix, you're screwed. I can't get wet because I have electronic devices on me. So it would kind of suck for me. I always have to keep this top on. They do sell the soft top and the soft top does come off very easily, but it doesn't look as cool. Everybody knows the hard top is the coolest one, and that's pretty much it. So guys, let's go over it quickly, about a full from front to back, and I'm going to knock this out in two minutes. Exterior, what do I think about it? Excellent. I love the aggressive look. I love the new fender flare. I love that cut, that painted fenders. I love the, the grill, the hood scoops that go in here, or the heat inductors. I love that. I love the pickup bed. It's awesome. It holds up to, what, 1,800 pounds, so you can fit a nice motorcycle on the back of your car, the back of your pickup truck, and be, be good to go. The back seats have plenty of room, so they're pretty comfortable. They're not the most, like, luxurious, but that's not what you're doing. And to be honest with you, I've been in a Tacoma. They're not very comfortable either. So that's beside the point. It also has all the durability, functionality of it. You have, you open up the back seats, you have plenty of compartment space to store things. It's crazy because you think, oh man, I got nowhere to put my stuff. 
Well, that's not true. Everything is in the back seat and you have everything you need. Awesome, cool stuff. You have electronics throughout the car itself. You have speakers, you have Bluetooth speakers. It's, it's just great. It's just speakers on the front dash. I love it. I love it. Interior wise, we're talking leather now. We're talking nice, soft leather, very durable at the same time because you're going to need that durable leather in case that it starts to rain or whatever. You have that nice red stitching going throughout. So interior wise, I give it an 8 out of 10. I really do enjoy that interior. Exterior, I go back, I would give it an 8 out of 10 as well. I love the look of it. To each his own. Some people don't like this pickup. I do. I love it. Now, let's go over the performance of it. Well, the performance, I couldn't really test the off-road performance. I did go off into a really extremely bumpy road, I will say that, but I can't tell you off-road stuff like that. Cool features this Jeep has is that it can actually, you can, you can lower the actual tire pressure, just like any car. But the thing is, you would set up in the car at what tire pressure you want. You want it to be at 35, you want it to be at 30 whatever you would set it up and then ultimately when you start learn, letting out the air pressure of your tire the car will honk and let you know that you've reached that that number and if you want to inflate your tires it's the same thing you set the you know desired inflation and then what it will go ahead is it will honk when it gets to that point so like i said the performance is all there it's pretty cool with the v6 engine i wish they did a v8 engine but you can swap it out and do what you want um, a lot of people have been doing that for decades, so who cares, right? But all in all, the car's there. It's, it's just an amazing, in my opinion, it's better than a Tacoma. It's better than the uh, Ford Ranger, the way it looks, as far as that goes. Um, now, though, they're all great vehicles. I'm not saying anything against that, but I just love the look of this one in particular. Now, this Rubicon does spoil me a little bit because it's very hard to compete with this interior and this look. Um, I don't know how anybody else would do it. Oh, I just passed up the dealership. Oh, gosh. If you're looking into getting one of these and you're kind of hesitant on pulling the trigger, absolutely do it. You won't regret it. Jeeps do hold their value. I don't think you'll get 60 grand out of your Jeep. So if you bought this car today for 60 grand, I don't think you'll get 60 grand back if you try to trade it in or if you sold it down the road. Absolutely not. But it will hold its value considering, you know, depreciation over time. It won't, it won't depreciate as fast as other cars, you know. So all in all, yes, yes, it's a great vehicle. Jeep did a great job with this, and I love the delivery of it. I love how they performed. I love how they introduced the truck. I love just everything they did with it. It was a very smart on the marketing side, just smart on everything they thought about as far as building this truck and all the features quirks and things like that they really did think about us so all in all guys that's my video i want to thank you so much i want you to be blessed especially with everything going on with this sickness that's been flying around please be clean you know and make sure you're caring for each other be supplied hunker down be blessed drive safe all right i love you guys thank you so much please like subscribe and if you want this vehicle john my buddy will be in the description below contact him and he will get you set up just let him know i sent you and he will look out for you 190 percent i will see you on the next one guys peace hey, hey.